Good morning. This is Jean Farrington speaking. Our child's lighting this morning is taken from the writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. The greatest delight to which the fields and woods minister is the suggestion of an occult relationship between people, plants, and trees. I am not alone and unacknowledged. They nod to me and I to them. The waving of the boughs in the storm is new to me and old. It takes me by surprise and yet is not unknown. Its effect is like that of higher thought or a better emotion coming over me when I deemed I was thinking justly or doing right. We light our chalice this morning in honor of the wonderful natural world around us. This morning's story is from a version told by Robin Wall Kimmerer, who's a Native American botanist. And she writes, When Nana Bojo, the Anishinaabe original man, our teacher, part man and part manadu, walked the world. He took note of who was flourishing and who was not of who was mindful of the original instructions and who was not. He was dismayed when he came upon villages where the gardens were not being tended, the fish nets were not repaired, and the children were not being taught the way to live. Instead of seeing piles of firewood and caches of corn, he found the people lying beneath the maple trees. They had their mouths wide open, catching the thick, sweet syrup of the generous trees. They had become lazy and took for granted the gifts of the Creator. They did not do their ceremonies or care for one another. He knew his responsibility, so he went to the river and dipped up many buckets of water. He poured the water straight into the maple trees to dilute the syrup. Today, maple sap flows like a stream of water with only a trace of sweetness to remind the people both of possibility and of responsibility. And so it is that it takes 40 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup.
I talk to the trees, but they don't listen to me. This is a lyric from the 1951 Lerner and Lowe Broadway musical, Paint Your Wagon. It's a gorgeous song. The musical is about Gold Rush era California, and I wanted to use these words, I talk to the trees, as a starting point because I hope that on this Indigenous People's Day, you will consider who you are taking the opportunity to listen to, when and why. Here on the East Coast, we spend a lot of time around Indigenous Peoples Day talking about the impact of Columbus landing in the Caribbean and the catastrophic cascade effect that ultimately led to the genocide of Native people on this continent. We also speak a lot about the impact of the Puritan pilgrims' arrival not far from here, where they were able to take advantage of food stores that were left by villages that had been obliterated by rampant disease brought by French trappers and other early European prospectors. We rarely put the California gold rush in the context of our understanding of the native story and what it means to carry that story as part of the consciousness of our living spiritual journey as Unitarian Universalists. For me, it is one of the most stark examples of the way in which the European concept of land and property have and continue to thrive on concepts of extraction as a measure of success, power, and oppression. What we call California had been arguably the most diversely populated land on this continent prior to European settlement. Hundreds of thousands of people lived in small villages across that fertile and abundant region that thrived with flora and fauna. Not that these cultures were always bucolic or Eden-like. Certainly, there was conflict. Humans are humans. But a basic concept that has been shared with me by native people of that region and historians is the idea of humans as stewards of the land as opposed to owners of the land. Land, wildlife, agriculture are not for the purpose of generating wealth, but they are a shared sustenance. It is a relational concept of living with the earth that I'm still learning about through the native and indigenous lens. So I'll stop there because I am no native person or native scholar. What is clear, however, is that the white migrants who came to this and other regions had other ideas. First, the Spanish who sought to concentrate their wealth through religious oppression and assimilation of native people, and then the migrant settlers from the eastern parts of the continent came in the 1840s to literally pull the value out of the earth. It is a shocking contrast. Ultimately, the California gold rush gave starter fuel to an industrial narrative that continues today, with natural gases and fracking being stripped from literally broken land. It is the reason that Standing Rock is still relevant. One people protecting the life-giving resource of water, and another people seeking to pull dangerous and toxic resources from the land for profit. It is a basic difference of how one understands life. Each Sunday, 
we start our worship time together lighting a candle to honor the native people and the land that First Parish in Cambridge occupies that was stolen from them. I started this two years ago based on a conversation with Reverend Danielle de Bona about her experience as someone of native descent in Unitarian Universalism. Our conversation was in part because of hearing that more and more meetings, congregations, gatherings were investing in doing land acknowledgement to recognize the native history of where they were located. But as a person of color, I didn't feel comfortable offering words of my own. Any kind of story in the moment not offered by someone of native descent felt like it would be appropriation or weak apology. So we settled on a simple statement in the order of worship and a physical gesture, the lighting of a candle, in silence, as a reminder and as opening up space for each of us to consider, question, and think about the history of Native people in that moment, no matter how brief. Part of me is frustrated these days because I think land acknowledgments have become rote and demonstrative in a way that is performative. The commitment to justice for Native and Indigenous people lasts only as long as the words that some people speak. I'd like us to consider being more than that. The initial harm of Native displacement has to do with what continues today, a lack of relationship. Relationship is not about satisfying a curiosity, but it is about actual understanding. It is taking time to seek opportunity to learn firsthand, but then to carry your piece of that learning forward into all you do. To be willing to reorient your perspective because of what is shared with you. To see our industrial world differently to listen to music differently, to reflect on the history of New England differently, to look at the flag of Massachusetts differently, to look at offensive team mascots differently, and to even listen to a beautiful song from a classic Broadway musical differently. Our Soul Matters theme for the month of October is deep listening. When I share with you the phrase, I talk to the trees, I'm not asking you to literally talk to trees, but I'm asking you to consider what it might be like to be a people who has existed for several millennia, only to be forced to survive and fight for the last few hundred and not be heard. What if you are the trees who are not listening? If you are the breeze whose voices don't you hear or won't you hear. Our greatest work as Unitarian Universalists is to be more than marking Indigenous Peoples Day with a prayer or a song or a land acknowledgement. Our work is to actually strive to live at all times in right relationship with both the tortured history and the living, thriving Native people who are in our presence today. To prioritize justice issues that impact their communities no less than we fight for black lives, no less than we defend trans lives, no less than we protect a woman's right to choose as well as her right to be president of the United States. Our work is not done with a land acknowledgement. That is only the beginning of living into the relationship we have yet to actually begin. I talk to the trees, but they don't listen to me. I talk to the stars, but they never hear me. The breeze hasn't time to stop and hear what I say. I talk to them all in vain. But suddenly, my words reach someone else's ear, at someone else's heartstrings, too. I tell you my dreams, and while you're listening to me, 
I suddenly see them come true. May it be so. Evening breeze, spirit song, sing to me when the day is done. Mother Earth awakens me with the heartbeat of the sea. Evening breeze, spirit song, evening breeze, spirit song, sing to me when the day is done. Mother Earth awakens me with the heartbeat of the sea. Evening breeze, spirit song, 